G'day guys, before we hop into today's vlog, I just want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. From now on, I'm going to be putting out daily vlogs every single day. I'm going to be tracking my process, playing these 1, 2, 6 max games, hopefully moving up in stakes. But even if I don't, you'll get to watch me fall on my face every single day on this YouTube channel. So make sure you hit subscribe so you get the new videos as they come out every single day. For now, onto the vlog. Welcome back to the vlog. It's currently a quarter past 5 a.m. and yet another cold Melbourne morning. As per usual at this time of the day, I really don't feel like I want to play some poker right now. Really just want to curl back up into bed, but you know, that's no good excuse to not put the work in and get this volume out. So I've got to get a quick feed in, see if I feel a bit better after that, but then straight on to the poker. Okay, so it's about 6 a.m. at the moment. Just finished up that big breakfast. Feeling a lot better afterwards. So tasty. So now that we've got the food in the system, feeling good, feeling ready to go play some poker. The goal for today, as always, is to get that 1,500 hands and going for that A grade level play, looking to practice self-talk as I always do, and just focus on what my opponents are doing and trying to adjust my strategy to ultimately exploit their strategy. So that's going to be the goal. If I do that well, I'm going to give myself that A grade level play. So without any further ado, let's get in the game. Okay, so we have wrapped up the first poker session for the day. Ended up playing a total of 2 hours and 38 minutes this morning for a grand total of 612 hands. So obviously not the most volume I've ever put in in a single session, but I'm taking a bit of a break now. Elizabeth and I are going to watch a video about stock trading. In terms of the gameplay grade for this morning session, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give myself an A plus on the session. I was felt like I really stuck to what I said my plan was before the session. Just practice self-talk, make sure all the decisions are a logical response to what your opponent's strategy is, try to exploit their mistakes. And I think obviously it's a bit easier to do that at an A plus level when you're only playing about a two and a half hour session. But regardless, still want to give myself due praise and I really think I earned the A+, plus, even though it was a shorter session. And with the very high level of play for myself today, I'm very happy to say it did pay off and I ended up making 879 on the morning session, which I'm pretty sure is, I don't know if it's the biggest score I've had overall on this vlog by the end of the day, but I think in a single session it's the longest one I can remember having in in a while to be honest so you don't want to focus on the results and get emotionally invested in them too much when you play poker but i will admit i am a bit human in the moment and pretty stoked with that win so that's the first session done i'm going to take a break now get into the stock trading webinar but after that i'm going to get back into the poker and we'll get the rest of those hands for today out G'day there, so it's about 4.30pm here on a cold and wet Melbourne afternoon. Obviously given the circumstances, I don't really like that we all have to be inside all the time, but on a day like this, you kind of do appreciate it just a little bit perhaps. So anyway, I have wrapped up my second session for the day, ended up playing a total of 3 hours and 38 minutes for a total of 890 hands bringing the daily total hands up to 1,502. So just barely scraping by the daily goal, but we did do it, so I'll take that. As far as results from the session go, I lost 48 on the session, so definitely not the biggest loss we've had on the vlog, but not the biggest win either. In fact, not a win at all. <laughs> 
In terms of my gameplay grade for the afternoon session, I'm gonna give myself a B for the session. I do like a lot of the decisions I did make and I feel like particularly for the first probably two and a half hours of the session, I was playing pretty focused, pretty disciplined, but then I did make one really bad call off with Pocket Queen's preflop when it was pretty obvious the other guy had aces or kings. So I felt a bit silly for doing that. I think that was a result of just it being towards the end of the second session. I was starting to feel a bit fatigued. It's something I always complain about and I usually do tilt and start to downgrade myself when I'm playing fatigued. And then I actually did stick around for probably about another hour, an hour and a half playing uh, a bit too aggressive. And I definitely think my results from this session reflected the fact that it started off really well early and then just sort of fell off a cliff. So I can't really go with that high of a grade when I did get that much tilted. So I'm gonna give myself a B for this session. So obviously I did have two very, very different sessions over the course of today. And I think I definitely did play a lot, lot better in the first session of the day. One of the things I think I did really well in that first session is I was keyed in, I was focused on what I thought my opponent was doing and look for good spots to go for thin value, but also look for really good spots to try and bluff my opponent off their hand, just like I did in this next one. So the action's on a unknown low jack. They go ahead and open it up to five. Then the action gets to me in the big blind and I have 10 eight of clubs. I think I have a pretty easy call here when I only have to call three extra to see a flop with a hand as strong as king eight suited. I think it's an easy decision to call. I think there might be some merit to three betting occasionally, but I think calling is probably the better option. That's what I go ahead and do. So it heads up to a flop of queen eight six with two diamonds. I go ahead and check it to the pre-flop aggressor. They see bet three. When the action's back in on me here, obviously I'm getting a great price to call. And since I do have a middle pair, it's pretty likely that I do have the best hand. So definitely not gonna fall for such a cheap price. I do throw in the call here. Then we are still heads up to a turn, which is the Six of hearts, so obviously pairs bottom pair and puts out the backdoor flush draw. So obviously going to go ahead and check it to the preflop aggressor. And they keep aggressing, they go ahead and bet 16. So actually a pretty big bet now. Obviously somewhat concerned that I might be behind now. Obviously I lose to any queen. Uh, over pairs, if my opponent does have a hand like 5-6 or 6-7, maybe even 8-6. I lose to all of that now. So I do think there might be some merit to folding here, but... It's not what I do. I do throw in the call here. I do think it is small set. I do lose to a lot of hands in my opponent's range. I actually do beat a lot of the hands in my opponent's range here with middle pair just because there is so many draws out on this board. Like, you know, any Jack 10, 10, 9 are all gut shots that my opponent could potentially be semi bluffing with. And obviously there's two flush draws out there now. So my opponent could have, you know, a hand like Ace Two of Hearts. That's a, you know, the nut flush draw on the turn. So there's a bunch of hands in their range that I do beat also. So that's why I decide to throw in the call. Obviously it's a bit dicey because we lose to a bunch, but we also do beat a bunch. And I think particularly with 10, eight of clubs, I like calling with that hand in particular because I don't like, I, ha I have the 10 of clubs in my hand, right? So I know it's more likely that my opponent will be betting with a hand like, you know, um, Jack 10 of hearts. Whereas if I have you know, the 10 of hearts in my hand, Probably like folding that one a bit more, especially to the big price, but not gonna fold the one with the tenor clubs. I do throw in the call, so we are still heads up to a river. And the river's an interesting one. It is the king of hearts. So I go ahead and check it to the aggressor. They keep on aggressing. They go ahead and bet 32.66. The action's back on me here, and I actually think this is a very interesting spot. And I honestly considered doing any three excuse me, I considered doing any three of the options that were available to me. The first one I considered was potentially hero calling here with my pair. Obviously I do have some showdown value and I beat my opponent's bluffs, but I dismiss that option pretty quickly just because I think it's gonna be pretty hard for my opponent to actually pay bluffing when the board runs out like this, like the backdoor flush draw got in. He could have potentially triple barreled with front door, you know, diamonds, but it's not a move you see that often in my opinion. So I actually think out of all three options, calling probably the worst one. So then the next logical step I went to was potentially just folding here. And look, if you did decide to fold here, I think that would be a totally fine play. Got nothing wrong with it. It's gonna be pretty hard for us to have the best hand here. So we should potentially fold. Obviously we lose to uh, the backdoor flush, any six, 
um, any queen or any king. So like my opponent could definitely have any of those hands. So I would not blame anyone for folding, but I think there's a better play. And that is to check raise this river as a bluff. And here's why I really, really like doing it in this spot in particular. We, like I said earlier, it's gonna be really hard for us to have the best hand with our pair here. But I actually think there is a lot of hands in our opponent's range that are gonna to fold to a check raise here. Like if they did go, go for a third barrel with a hand like ace queen or queen jack, or even king queen actually, like it's gonna be pretty hard for them to call a check raise when I could easily have a six. I could easily have a backdoor flush. I could have slow played pocket eights. I could have eight six suited. Like there's so many strong hands that I think anything that's like two pair or worse is gonna have a really hard time calling off here. And just as a general overall poker strategy thing, if you do notice your opponent making really thin value bets on the river, the perfect way to exploit that is to be check raising the river a bunch to just totally punish them, put them in off spots. I'm not necessarily saying I had a read that this opponent was doing that because it is an unknown opponent, but I have seen people in the one, two games I play do this. I think in this spot in particular, it's a great move to do it. In addition, like, we have the eight, so we know our opponent is less likely to have a really strong calling hand, like pocket eights. So I think this is a really good spot to go for the check raise bluff. And I decide to pull the trigger. I go ahead and raise it up to 99. Then my opponent tanks for a little bit before folding. Whew. Absolutely stoked. We do get the bluff through on the river. But having said that, not quite sure if my logic and thinking throughout this hand was correct. Maybe just folding it is actually a better play. Maybe there's merit to hero calling. Just let me know what you guys think. I am super, super curious to hear your opinions on this hand in particular. So hop down in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite option on the river was. Was it calling? Was it folding? Or was it going for the check raise bluff? Super, super curious to hear what you guys have to say about this hand. So that's gonna wrap up the vlog for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As you know, I hugely appreciate it. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a bunch. For now, I'm out of here. Peace.